Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to violence, the word and the act. Hi, this is the Professional Amateur Hour coming to you with another review. This week, I looked at Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill, and this 1965 movie was directed by Russ Mayer and stars Tura Santana, Haji, and Lori Williams. The story of this one is that there's this gang of three go-go dancers who travel around the desert in their pretty cool looking cars just doing acts of violence. You know, they kill a guy, they kidnap a girl, they're looking for this old man's stash, and that type of stuff. What will happen exactly? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. All right, so what works with this movie? Well, I would say this movie is lots of fun, mostly coming from the three main actresses. You know, they have this little gang and they have very kind of distinct personalities. You have the leader who's always shouting, Knock it off! And you watch that girl. She's liable to go any time. If she gives you any hint, you tie her up and gag her again. You understand? All right already. I'm hip. And then there's the number two who's always pouting and, you know, is always uptight. You put me a hand, no? A soft drink yet. Honey, we don't like nothing soft. Everything with us is hard. And then their third member is this girl who just likes to dance. My motor never runs down, baby. And besides, you are such a wonderful audience. We just got out of that last and she still got to go into a routine, eh? And so I really like these three characters together. They're not really the most moral of characters. I would say, you know, if anything, they're anti-heroes in the story. And they just play off of each other. All of them have, have their own fun characteristics. And then even when they are, you know, bickering amongst each other, that's lots of fun too. So I would say, yeah, the characters are a great source of fun in this movie. I would say the plot is also good. It's actually kind of like two plots, like the first half has its own plot, and then the second half uh, kind of involves this other plot. But they do kind of really flow into each other perfectly. And it's really, you know, cool to see this kind of like um, story go along. And you're always wondering, you know, what will happen because the characters are quite volatile. And so, yeah, you're always wondering what's going to happen next. In addition, I got to say the feeling of this movie is really good. This is a Russ Meyer uh, film, but it doesn't have really any nudity in it. I don't think there is actually any nudity. Um, there might be some cleavage, but, you know, that's not quite the same. But the feel of it is that it's very 60s, like all the music, all the costumes, you know, the stereotypes are right out of the 60s. However, it's done in this kind of like older, maybe the 50s style of, of movie making where, you know, it's all black and white. All the sound effects are, um, are kind of the same. The score is the same besides, you know, the, the 60s songs they throw in. And so it has this really unique feeling where it feels like it's kind of like a movie out of time. And as a, you know, a movie lover, I really did enjoy that. It definitely gave it something unique. Let's see, what else did I like about it? I liked the script. I thought the script was pretty good. It's very like a, a Tarantino script where the, you know, the characters are just talking to each other most of the time and really playing off of each other to create tension. And even like the first lines, it's like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to violence. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to violence. And then I, I was hooked. I was, I was like, a, a 60s movie about violence? Yeah, this is up my alley for sure. Uh, the, the score was good, or like the music was good, all the songs out of the 70s. Um, the action was good. There's like this car race. I, I, I like that. And there's not too much action. It's a lot of tension, though. It's really good uh, at building tension, especially when they meet kind of the, the family in the desert and there's something creepy going on with them. That's really cool as well. And so there's lots of things that make this a really great movie. All right, so what doesn't work with this movie? Well, this one, you know, I had a hard time finding something negative to say. I would say it is this old timey feel to it. So if you're not, you know, a fan of kind of older movies, then you probably wouldn't enjoy it. I know a lot of, you know, young people are not into old things and I quite enjoyed it. You know, the script, it kind of feels like, you know, 
back in the 50s, like it was everyone talking to each other. It had this like gravitas to, to their words. Um, they even have like a fourth wall break that I thought was very out of place in this one. And here's where our screenplay starts to unfold right now. So it does have this old time feel to it. So if that's not really your cup of tea, then maybe stay away from it. And that brings me to who I think would enjoy this movie. Well, I'm going to say everyone. It's such a good movie. Um, you know, if you're into B movies, this is like a perfect B movie. If you're into horror movies, they have this kind of like creepy hillbilly family that you can enjoy. And yeah, so I would say, yeah, definitely go check it out. As for a rating, I thought this was a very good B movie, so I'm going to give it a 7.8. And having said that, I think that's all I want to say, so I will see you next time. Hi, this is the Professional Cynic Hour coming to you with a post credit scene this time. You know, I really did enjoy this movie. I wanted to give it an 8 out of 10 and say that it was a great bad movie, but apparently that was too cynical. But, you know, when I was looking for kind of the media pictures that I use, I came across a few articles saying that Norman Reedus was teaming up with AMC to make a faster pussycat kill kill TV show. And Norman, if you're out there and you need like a creative director or a creative consultant, give me a call. I got many ideas for episodes. Just just listen to a taste of what I got. I got uh, Pussycats in Hell. In this episode, the Pussycats go to a junkyard for, you know, parts for their cars. And there's a cult living in there. So they kind of have to fight off the cult. Then I got Pussycats versus the Snake Bites. This is where the Pussycats have to find this other gang and get revenge on them for stealing one of their cars. Then we got... Pussycats versus the Cobra Gang. This is where they have to go steal a car uh, for a new member and then, of course, avo avoid the revenge that's coming their way. Then we got uh, Pussycats versus the Black Rebel Car Club. This one, uh, the, the leader of the other gang, becomes infatuated and in love with one of the Pussycats and won't leave them alone. So in order to, you know, get them off their backs, they decide to have a interstate race and the loser has to submit to the winner. Anyways, that's just a taste of what I got. I got lots more of that. So uh, give me a call. And having said that, I hope to see you in the next review. And yeah, see you then.